Student Voice Australasia is a network and we really are um, encouraging collaboration and cross-institutional exchange of practices. We have uh, resources available for our members. We organize annual events um, as well as online sessions for various networks. We have opportunities to collaborate on projects and contribute to the sector uh, resource library and um, also to network. This particular session is vocational education and training uh, network session. Uh, this is uh, for those who are involved in TAFEs and uh, facing some challenges that are quite unique in student voice for TAFEs uh, and student voice student engagement uh, due to the nature of the organizations. So we uh, uh, have created this network early this year and this is our third session. The, this network has been open to non-members all year uh, just to see the interest, see if there, there are um, other institutions that are interested in being uh, part of these sessions. And um, it's been really great to keeping this open. Uh, we'll see what we can do next year. Maybe, maybe we'll have one or two also open, but usually our networks are for members only, but I will be announcing that in our newsletter and other communications as well. The networks like this uh, are here to, again, exchange practices. We've heard from Homes Glen, we've heard from TAFE Queensland this year already, sharing their practice uh, and sharing what they do. And those are recorded on our YouTube channel. And today we will be hearing from Andrew Scott Ford, uh, from Canberra Institute of Technology Student Association and I'm um, really keen uh, to hear his presentation and uh, looking forward to a discussion after his session as well. Andrew, whenever you're ready. Thanks for the opportunity. I'm um, going to just run through a bit of a PowerPoint presentation and I'm favorite for people to ask questions. It's a bit tricky for me to see the questions at the same time as the PowerPoint, so feel free just to come off mute and um, ask those questions at any time. I, sometimes I think it's easy if you have questions in your mind um, to ask the question or just put it in the chat and we'll circle back to it at the end. Um, I sort of wanted to acknowledge him in the room, Scott Nichols is the CIT Student Experience Lead and he works at CIT as, as part of the institution and we're the Student Association. So we're a unique proposition in the in the vocational training type space around being an independent student organisation, a little bit like what people might um, be aware of in the university sector, um, but obviously the sort of the profile of the work we do is slightly different. So. I'm going to talk a bit about some of the student voice initiatives that um, we've we've created over time and some things that um, we're working with with Scott and the team about what the future might look like. So just give me one second. I will just go to share the screen. People can let me, maybe someone give me the thumbs up when they know it's there. Perfect. So um, it's all about you is kind of our mantra. Um, it's about understanding what the student um, might need and then trying to work out how we might resource that or particularly how we might connect them up to that resource. Um, that's really important uh, to us and just make sure. I too want to um, acknowledge the Ngunnawal people, which are the, trust, which are the traditional custodians of the land we work on here in Canberra and we recognise other people and families who have connection to that land as well. We acknowledge and respect their continuing culture, the contribution they make to this the life of the city and region and I'd like to acknowledge and welcome any other Aboriginal Torres Strait Islander people who might be attending today's event. So we're going to sort of walk through a few items around what, what I kind of broadly call student voice at CIT. This is also a version of a presentation that I've done for the Tape Directors Australia Convention both in 2019 and in 2022 and, as, and also part of a panel of um, um, members at that time who also were involved with Student Voice Australia. As well, so it's interesting to reflect back on some of this conversation, and I guess put a 2024 spin on it, and a conversation with the people in this room about what 2025 might look like. So we'll touch upon why our organisation has just facilitated a student forum environment at CIT. Some of the learnings in the 2024 version. We'll also talk about some of the next steps. Um, Scott's uh, new in his role, and so there's a renewed energy around the conversation about student voice and how it might be activated. And, and potentially if I speak quickly and Scott's still in the room, you might share some of those initial thoughts that he has after being here for um, you know, half a year nearly. And the other part is, I guess, there's a set at the bottom, what's next on our student journey. 
So here's a bit of a snapshot. This is from a couple of years ago, but it probably just reflects a bit of a profile of what a TAFE environment looks like, um, you know, high levels of satisfaction, both from students and employees, but there's always within that an opportunity um, to do a little bit better and just to, to, to focus on what might be the next layer of, of quality outcomes. And sometimes the quality outcomes is, is not related to the training, just the training's environment in which that questions are raised. So that's a snapshot from 2022. Unfortunately, I didn't get the opportunity to pull one together for 2024, but that's a reflection of CIT's profile um, back then. And some of those numbers um, are not dissimilar across the years in terms of the types of students and the profile of students that exist in the, in the Canberra TAFE environment. So just quickly who we are. So as I mentioned before, we're, um, we're an organisation that's engaged by CIT to provide services. So we are an independent um, ACNC registered um, not-for-profit organisation. And we really try to focus on the non-academic support systems. So we've got two key drivers. One is to be student issue experts for the students and also to be a touch point for CIT on student issues. So we want to provide that interface with information, we don't pretend that the, our small team are the, all the um, experts in every area, but what we are fiercely committed to is having the networks and the partners that have that um, information that's um, important and, and relevant and current, and then being able to be an on-campus interface for that service. So um, I guess we've hit upon a forum and I've, I've presented different things before and talked about student feedback and learned about student feedback. Um, and some of those questions are the ones that are we, I guess we um, answered or we, we worked with CIT um, about trying to answer. And I guess as a result of that, um, we've we've come up with the model that's evolved over time around the student forum, which is a, a combination of both a student survey that's sent um, electronically to all students to, um, to be able to fill out, but also in class forums where questions can be targeted to areas to get a little bit more conversation about possibly what the solution might be or what the problem really is rather than sort of sort of a yes no tick box exercise which sometimes surveys can be and those individual class forums are uh, occur without the teachers in the room so that adds more well, we think it's another layer of i guess honesty about about some of the answers so here's a bit of a snapshot we run these every uh semester and just the, the nature and the profile of of, for us CIT students or, or TAFE students, um, the, the churn is significant. People are necessarily here for three to five years, like a university context. So we aim them to be between week four and six um, every semester because we understand that while some of the themes are common, some of, some of the maybe the target areas we might look to dive into might change when the student profile changes. So that's a snapshot of the most recent one. And interestingly, um, we've had a significant reduction in the students that have participated in this survey from semester one. And I'll touch upon a little bit around, wouldn't I say so much survey fatigue our students experience, but really um, a concern that their feedback isn't necessarily being action. And it's something that I know Scott um, is equally passionate about how we turn student feedback into results um, so, so the students can value the time they spend doing it, whether it's online, um, anonymously or in a class forum. So we have five um, teaching colleges across CIT, we have a number of physical campuses, so we, we stretch our resources across all of those. As I said, there's an online survey version, there's a local questions version when they were invited by HODS, and, you know, the feedback is provided in multiple forms, but in sort of a from the student forums environment within 48 hours to the head department because they've invited us into their classrooms to get localised information. So we provide that quick turnaround. Then there's, I guess, there's a system process into the broader survey that is done um, at the end of the survey, a process and the contracts, and there are other mechanisms within CIT where that information is, is shared and also um, Scott, Scott and I work on how that might be sort of streamlined um, for the future. So here's just a little bit of a, a bit of a snapshot of some of the, um, I guess, uh, key areas for improvement. And, you know, we're, we're excited this isn't representing 30 or 40% of students, it's more just these are the biggest themes that exist from all that, that research that we received. I think the important bit is sort of the note that we put at the bottom that this year we started to get some pushback around our role as that intermediary for students around feedback that um, they're frustrated a little bit with us because we're not um, you know, getting any actions either with the feedback. So it just, it's, it's just something to, to factor in and this is a presentation about the environment. So I thought it was relevant to share, share that. Um, 
here's a bit how we turn that sort of data into outcomes, noting that, you know, some of the progress and the pace of that and probably potentially the visibility for students to see that exchange um, is a challenge. But we have a range of structures um, within CRT, formal communities or informal networks where that information and those themes can be shared. And without repeating myself and Scott might want to speak, comment on it briefly, we are looking at how we might make that sort of that feedback mechanism fit into existing systems more, um, like more sort of easily so that we maximise the chance that we're um, hearing and addressing the concerns or, and importantly, maybe looping back to the students about what that might look like. So I probably won't read out all the slides. Nothing's worse than a PowerPoint presentation where the presenter just reads them. But um, they're some of the scenarios that we, we continue to work on. And some of those um, dot points are similar from when this process started in um, 2017. So I guess I just wanted to sort of wrap up this short snappy presentation because I'm keen to see if Scott has some comments before he has to leave. Um, there were obviously two key partners in any conversation about student voice. One's with the student body itself uh, and and equally importantly is the, the organisation that has those students. So um, since our sort of recent student survey and post this um, symposium, we've gone down a bit of a path on a, on a few items that I'll touch upon and obviously Hannah's in the room to be broadly representative of our, our conversations with Student Voice Australia, I should say Australasia, shouldn't I? Um, but we've explored um, UNITU, which was um, a presenter and sponsor at the recent symposium, just to sort of pressure test that um, system with the, with the CIT staff that are student facing or responsible for the sort of student data, student engagement environment. And Scott was able to facilitate that for us. But equally, we um, engaged with uh, some training around student journey mapping so that we could maybe provide a complementary resource for CIT to, to do some student journey mappings, whether they be big or small, just to, and we're working with Humine to sort of, you know, utilise their system and process. Um, and we're actually currently in a bit of a trial to test that and I'll touch upon that shortly. So I only got a couple more slides, but essentially, yeah, post the symposium, we invited you to come on, to come on site to meet to some of the key staff to talk about their platform. And it was, it was interesting, um, the areas that came were student services, there were student data, some members of the student data team, there were people from the apprentice mentor program. There was just a, cross, a profile of people in that room. And interestingly, our reflection was that probably due to the, the short term and often, um, you know, the nature that they're here because their employers had them here, you know, approximately one third of our students are apprentices. So they're only here actually one day a week employed by someone else to do a really specific task. And possibly the pulse feature might be the one that might be most intuitive for the TAFE student profile, particularly that would be able to be easily enabled, more easily enabled for students to actually utilise rather than necessarily discussion boards, etc. We thought that might not necessarily be the first and most natural place for our student profile to interface, particularly if we wanted to get their, their, their genuine feelings or their genuine um, feedback as opposed to just looking like we've asked a question, yes, no. And um, we're going to keep working with, with CIT as they sort of evolve the student survey framework to understand whether how we might do a free trial of that pulse um, early next year and step through, I guess, the new two process to determine whether that might be a tool which can sort of, one better word, complement or even maybe house some of the student um, forum, student um, feedback process that this survey has traditionally done um, for a period of time. Uh, the other part is I sort of also want to touch upon in sort of closing our student journey mapping training occurred earlier this year with human eye and now we're just, I guess, testing the model. Um, and interestingly, one of the participants um, in the process around our sort of the induction of an apprentice student journey referred to the bus stop as part of the student journey that we're going to test this on, where essentially we're going to engage a series of, of apprentices to reflect on their, you know, essentially induction to CIT, their you know, the first class information that was shared to see where they're ready. And there's a list of, I guess, the, the players involved with the project team. Because what's really important is um, what we've learned over time is if there's not this co-ownership between the information that sits or gathers on behalf of CIT and CIT in an activation sense, then it, it, it probably impacted and created those barriers that students now have around providing quality feedback. Um, and for those who are in the new to presentation will we'll remember um, us being told that if students do quickly tire of giving feedback and they don't feel it's going anywhere. So 
is really exciting. This project is um, happening live, so it's um, you know we're halfway through the halfway through this sort of the short but verse project, but with a diverse team of people that can contribute back information, particularly to Scott, to look at how much um, we can do with these projects uh, going forward, so they become mutually beneficial. There's my um, contact details. I'm happy to share this slide to Anna. She's got it already, and we can send it out in the in the chat. Um, Thank you, and I do apologise that my camera's not on, but if people have any, maybe before people have any questions, then knowing that Scott might have to leave shortly, do you have any comments that you wanted to add, anything you wanted to correct me on, anything else that you think? <laughs> Thanks, Andrew, and hi, everybody. Um, as Andrew said, I'm Scott Nichols. I'm the uh, Academic Registrar and Student Experience Lead at CIT. Um, nothing to correct you on, Andrew. I think that was, uh, that was a really kind of comprehensive overview of what we've been talking about. I, I guess I'd say a couple of things really in quick observation, and my apologies, I do need to run in five minutes unexpectedly, but I'm very happy for anybody on the call or others to reach out because I can talk about this until the cows come home. Um, whilst I've only been at CIT for the last six months, I have been in similar roles, primarily in the university sector for the last 25 years. So I kind of know, I have a fair bit of experience around what student experience looks like. And the main point I would kind of offer or the main advice I would give is, is what Andrew talked about in his presentation is that doing surveys, doing forums, collecting insights from students about what their experiences are is pretty much all for naught unless you actually commit to doing something with that feedback and that information you receive. So um, one of the ones that Andrew raised and he went through it pretty quickly, but I'll talk to it in a little bit more detail is that we often have for a long while, as I understand it at CIT, got feedback from students about how complex our enrollment process is. Um, so, the <clears throat> excuse me, the challenge I have with that is that there's no point um, collecting that, that information periodically every six months for all of our students to tell us how complex the ed enrollment process is if we're actually not gonna commit to doing something about it. So um, that's what we're doing and that's what we will be doing is to actually understand why students think our enrollment process is complex and to actually understand, is it the technology? Is it our processes? Is that there are 15 steps in the process where we could use four steps, whatever it might be. So it's actually undertaking a commitment to say, <clears throat> not only do we want your feedback, but we're gonna do something with your feedback. So Andrew also mentioned in his presentation, we have created uh, a part of the organization which is called the Student Experience Committee. It reports directly to our academic council. So it is part of our governance structure. And that group then has representatives from across the university, including CIT, Student Association, but also importantly, we are very keen to get students involved in that conversation as well. So again, we can have another forum that actually is about outcomes rather than conversations. So the really important thing for me is to, yes, collect and collate and socialise feedback that we get from our students. But the real critical bit for me is to actually do something about it and to be able to demonstrate yeah, evidence that we've actually listened. Oh, there we are, we can see you now, Andrew. Um, so so actually do things where we can actually demonstrate we've listened and we've actioned on that that feedback. So that's the commitment that I'm, I've taken on in terms of this role. It's gonna take us a little while to get there, but that's definitely what we're trying to do. Well, I'm happy to field any questions or Scott will be leaving a couple minutes if anyone has any particular questions um, for Scott, because we have a slightly different perspective, but as you can pick up from the language, a very sh shared goal in, um, you know, in making a difference for the, you know, for, and to improve the systems for students. So does anyone have any particular questions for Scott while he's here? Scott can sneak off when he when he's so desires. Does anyone have any questions or comments for me? Otherwise I can hand back to Anna whether you have any questions or, or comments from your perspective. Uh, I'll kick us off and we'll see maybe some people are still thinking about that question. Um, just for more like context uh, wise, because I'm sure some people might not be as familiar with um, your particular organization. How old? How, how old is it and like you are quite f further along in your journey with student voice and like you're looking at all the system at the moment um how long did it take you to get here well i guess we've probably been around in sort of a sort of a, a student representative form for uh, over 30 years um when cit um sort of amalgamated it's sort of three major teaching campuses into one institution. We became one institute, one organisation as well. So, um, and we've also had this partnership where we looked after the um, cafe sort of candy bookshop services and then provided sort of student experience type, student activity type of arrangements, sort of, you know, orientation day activities, um, events, student advocacy if necessarily um, 
fee. And then I guess probably around about uh, 10 or 12 years ago, we hit upon this thing called, we basically created this thing called the Spring Forums, where what, what happens every year in the TAFE environment is this um, national questions around student experience and also so learner engagement survey it's called and there's also an um, employer employers um, agreement uh, sorry an employer survey as well and CELT has always been very sort of strong at that but it was interesting the questions were nationally created so then you kind of got to see where you rank but you didn't necessarily get to tease into what might be localized issues or localized solutions and we hit upon the spring forum probably about 12 or 13 years ago to go well we'll just have these opportunities for people to come one bit of work randomly because we put on food and then just share their thoughts. And then we'd work out how we could do deal with that. And then um, that probably evolved around sort of 10 years ago to go, well, if we know that um, weeks four to six would be a good time to have these conversations, um, then let's aim for that and work with colleges and departments to actually facilitate those intern like locally. And that sort of, and but. At that first phase, we just set up a series of questions and the only people that got to do the online survey were the people in that classroom. When COVID, after COVID, um, CRT agreed that the questions will sit in, I guess, their survey manager tool and then all students get invited to do it. So we had this massive up, uplift of, of students and I guess the range of students that did it because even if we were in class, in classrooms because that HUDs had invited us doing there or just a capacity related issue, they would never get access to the survey and the feedback mechanism. So we feel we have a bit more mature over the last three years where every student has at least an opportunity yes it's an online survey to at least participate in that in the generic um you know 15 phase of questions we sort of step through the journey as a student what your enrollment experience look like how did you learn about it what services do you use locally what might you want in terms of industry connection etc um, and happy to sort of send out the current questions if that's of relevance as well so that's sort of how it's evolved we've been around for 30 years to have to have our relationship with CRT but in the last sort of um, 10 years, we've really evolved this model of making sure we're really comfortable because unlike universities where you might have individual elected representatives or a really active student council, it's not quite that same model here at CRT, but we wanted to make sure that there are groups and profiles of students that we can, um, for comfortable, we can talk about their needs um, to CRT because we're actually actively and regularly um, communicating with them in a structured form, in addition to what anecdotally or ad hocly can happen during their time on campus. Right. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for the context and explaining all of that. Um, I can see in the chat, Ahmed also is asking, can students contribute to the methods of teaching? And um, as some students may have different learning styles and it's important that students don't feel left out. So have you been involved in anything, any work around this as well? Uh, so one of, the, one of the dot points in the slide talks about how we can um, engage students to sort of be one better being in co-design around you know, teacher delivery. Well, one of the things that I've experienced, so I've been in this sector uh, for 12 years and Originally, when I left uni, my first job was as a student assistance officer in this same place. So I've sort of had two, two generations of experience at this, at, at this engagement. It's always been traditionally very challenging uh, for, for TAFE students. I mean, if you think about the profile, 90% of them are part-time. As I said, over one third of our students are here one day a week employed by someone else to do their apprenticeship. So it's been challenging no matter whether CRT or SITS has tried to driven this sort of co-design model um, to actually get participants to do that. We've recently, um, CRTs have been, point of a word, co-designing a $350 million new campus and finding students even been involved in that, the evolution of that brand new modern campus environment was, was challenging, no matter how you go about doing it. So there's a, probably the majority of the answer is yes, if students would, would like to be involved, um, CRT is certainly open to where that, where that student involvement might be able to happen. Scott mentioned how we're involved with the Student Experience Committee, which is a subcommittee of the Academic Council, the, the Governing Council, Academic Governing Council of CIT, but we've struggled to get students to participate in that. So we're thinking about what might students, students who might be able to identify areas of interest and then work as to where we can get them to, you know, to participate in that. So rather than coming to the, coming to the existing committee structures, but if you're interested in teaching co-design or if you're interested in curriculum development or stuff then maybe connecting up those people who have interest in that space with with the areas there so um yeah that's probably a, my broader answer to the scenario that historically while there might be some people that have been 
have, have might be interested it's been traditionally very challenging to to find them and scott's comments earlier is a recommitment to go how might we how might we find them and then connect them with an experience that they would like to have um because maybe the more traditional evolving you know fortnightly governing meetings etc cetera, et cetera, are more problematic for students to participate in so um CERT is open to to do that and I guess we are open to that we haven't found in all the survey work we do many students have been particularly interested in contributing to the teaching methods they've probably got more responsive um, questions about um, areas of gaps. We also run a, as a slide aside, we also run a Teacher of the Year Awards process where we create a whole series of activation sessions nominate their favourite teacher and they provide written commentary about that. So we also have an opportunity to, to reflect and to share students' feedback around really great teachers and the great experiences that become part of an sort of an annual awards process that we facilitate with CIT staff. So we're not always just here advocating when there's challenges, we're also here promoting when there's um, best practice or really, or, or students feel they're really engaged with their teacher. I, I don't know if that answers the question fully, but that's probably some information that sits around that question from my perspective. Yeah, thank you. And I, I know that it is very difficult to engage students in TAFE um, environment. You already mentioned the all the roadblocks that students are facing. Um, are there roles or like opportunities to be engaged, uh, usually like volunteer based roles? Yeah, so our student, so we, we are student um, led organisations. So we have a student council, um, we also have a representative from CIT on that, but essentially the, um, you know, the governing um, is done by student group. We, we struggle to probably have it full, we can have nine members in total, which probably oscillate between um, four and six and when it's at its maximum. So we, we essentially have a, a staff team that does a lot of delivery in those activations we've we've talked about but um we we we, we, we i guess remunerate them slightly to attend the meetings um and other groups and this is probably what we find a little bit more volume of other groups who want to do things that are really locally specific so for example students might want to gather together as volunteer committees to facilitate events or fundraising activities for their end of year um, exhibitions and and profiling their work and the connections with industry activity when it's not built into the curriculum so we probably do as much work with, I guess, volunteer groups of students who have a, from a word, a cause, but a, a program or, or an outcome that they want to get. So we sort of co-facilitate that, even down to the sort of level of if there's administrative administration needs to be done or a bank account that needs to be held, we can facilitate that so students don't have to do that layer of work. Uh, so that's probably a lot where students from want to volunteer for activities that are linked to their training, but in areas of passion and probably speaks a part of my answer to, to Ahmed about going, we want to learn where those spots are and make it easier for students to do it around their capacity around study. Um, it doesn't always fit strip perfectly into you know a student representative of an academic council, but there are there are a lot range of activations where you know we work with students so where they're at around projects and there's we have a community work program that always identify for one of our community initiatives and often they're activated on campus so we do spend some time in that with that cohort of students constantly doing. Um, initiatives that they're interested in doing. The challenge is how we make those initiatives sustainable. So there might be a really great cause or a passion project of a, a group of students who are studying their set for in um, the diploma of community work. But um, once they leave, there's no one running those projects. So there's a bit of a um, bit of tension about you know the value in those initiatives. If they're great for six months, they're promoting credit courses, but then six months later, they don't exist. So there's a bit of that work in. So want students to volunteer in the space they're interested in, partly around their training, and then also creating a, a baseline of resources and information. So it doesn't matter what student you are, when you come, you still have access to the, the key things that students need, as we touched upon about being student issue experts. So that speaks a little bit to the breadth of, I guess, where students volu volunteer their, sorry, volunteer their time as part of their training. Yeah, thank you so much. That's um, yeah, that's good clarity to it as well. And um, it's really great that you have uh, even capacity to pay for some of those roles as well, like or some of the meetings they attend, because that I even know that not even not all tapes you know, are in that position at the moment with uh, just the budget distribution or anything. So that's really great. Well, I think it's important to we're asking people to give it the time to be um, to be to govern an organisation that turns over three plus, three plus million dollars a year that um, one we put on lunch 
um, you know, for they have their meetings, but we also, we, not, like, we don't pay them, so to speak, but we also cover their costs of participating in that. And I touched upon that student journey mapping activities. So, you know, we're probably looking at getting around about eight apprentices to come along to certainly a lunchtime session that will be facilitated um, around a few questions about their experiences. And they'll be being paid, they'll have, they'll have lunch plan as well. So we, you, we probably do need to make, everyone needs to make that sort of step change to go, if, if you want to, if you generally value the people's time and you want them to value that their time is going to be, um, you know, followed up on, then the idea that you find some way to remunerate or support them for their time, gift card, you know, free food, um, you know, cost of parking, transport, etc., is just should be minimum standard. And it's not a huge impost when you think in the broad context of, I said, we're a, we're a $3.5 million turnover business. And the idea that we can, you know, pay someone to come for one, one and a half hour, and remunerate someone to, you know, for one and one and a half hour governing council meeting from a student perspective, but with 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 lunch, you know, full lunch and a fifty dollar honorarium, it yeah should it shouldn't even be a question. But I, I do I, I agree with your point that it is it, it it it's a it's another layer of challenge that sometimes you know you know limits the growth of that student voice participation because you know it's, it's always a challenge to find that budget. Yeah. Does anyone else have questions for Andrew? I think everyone's just keen on listening in, gaining some insights. Um, okay, well, thank you so much, Andrew. Thanks for your uh, presentation and um, your contact details as well. I'm sure um, some people might contact you in future as well. And uh, thanks again for uh, sharing what you do and answering the questions. No problem. We might um, move on. Uh, we I don't know if we'll take the whole uh, meeting time, but I will just move on to the next uh, couple of bits of this session and discussion. Oh, there is actually um, another question from Joe. Do you have any terms of reference for the council um, that yeah that you could share potentially, Andrew? I'll I'll send a link to our ACNC profile and our constitution is on there. I'll send a link to our web. Our website as well. Oh, thank you. And we, and we, and I guess we do have a, for one of better words, a, uh, um, yeah, sort of a terms of reference protocol for the, for the, I guess the behaviour and the scope of people that are on camp on council. So I'll, I'll put that in the chat. Um, and also, we're part of the student experience network in, industry body, and they have a, a student board induction course, and we require all of our students to participate in that that. One, but we independent board induction course, which sort of hopefully helps people understand that you know if you're going to go on a governing board, you're not here to add, you know, change the flavours of the drinks that are sold in the shop. You really are about, um, you know, sort of overseeing the so sort of the strategic direction of the organisation. But also, if people do have um, individual, you know, things that they want to share to know where those systems are, but you know, we we don't need to, we don't encourage students to be coming with their you know, the bubble is broken and wait till there's a monthly meeting to raise that. We, we want students to, to know where those resources are ongoing to support students and having those resources, not rely on someone being a student rep to deal with in a day-to-day -day, day -day concerns. But yeah, so I, I will send a couple of links um, while you continue the meeting. And I must admit, I'm looking forward to seeing if we can learn a little bit more about Sabrina's um, activities as well, if we're going to go around the, around the room, Anna. Yeah, yeah, I was thinking that too. <laughs> but yeah, well, um, hopefully we'll be able to hear a bit more from you, Sabrina. Um, I'll quickly um, just share my screen and uh, sort of share what's um, what's next and um, a little bit about SVA, uh, again, just to encourage um, anyone or like introduce anyone to what we do. Um, because we recently have um, added on a discounted fee for TAFEs to join Student Voice Australasia to take to just uh, yeah benefit from the resources we have so far and continue developing resources that could be uh, TAFE specific. So um, in uh, our membership prospectus, which is uh, on our website, and I can share the link, we have um, created a, a membership. Um, sort of discounted membership for small institutions and TAFEs. Um, so if your TAFE is 
um, interested in being part of SVA, please contact me and let's um, have a chat about the fee you, you could cost to join. The uh, regular fee is uh, 5000 for new institutions to join. Uh, but if, uh, yeah, if, if your institution is smaller or um, facing some barriers around joining, please let me know and we can, we can work around this. Um, the reason uh, why uh, we sort of added this uh, opportunity for TAFEs to join as well is because we've been expanding our resources and in this network as well. So on our member portal, um, we've, uh, we have a toolkit by Homesglen, which has been shared quite a lot in the past, but we also uh, recently had um, have updates from TAFE Queensland. So they've shared um, their uh, student voice framework and their um, all of their templates that could be really useful, like position des descriptions, uh, expressions of interest, email templates, as well as like um, different other um, useful materials. And their um, student voice framework was actually introduced in the previous session. So uh, have a look on the, our YouTube channel. Our members have uh, access to all these templates and my goal as a coordinator is to really continue creating um, more resources and uh, another person actually from Holmes Glen so to uh, Joe's comment um, has actually I've been asking about in terms of reference as well so it's um, it's going to be interesting to uh, maybe develop again in terms of reference or other resources that could be really relevant for tapes knowing that it is very um it's labor intensive and it's also understaffed uh, space in TAFEs. Uh, so the more streamlined uh, things we can have and share with each other, I feel like the the better and the sort of the more things you can actually do th that are meaningful on your uh, at your institutions. So um, yeah, I will share the link to um, our membership prospectus in the chat. Um, but otherwise, if you have any questions for me, uh, about this um, email me or let's meet um, but I am yeah I'm actually really keen to continue the discussion and um, to yeah to continue exploring uh, where everyone is at the moment as well and uh, overall hearing this is a network just to really um, just to share your experiences and uh, share what you're working on or share maybe any challenges you are having so maybe we could uh, approach them together and um, these sort of discussions help me also uh, put on uh, really topical events or topical presentations that can be really useful in uh, next year as well. All right. Well, thank you so much for staying and uh, engaging and listening. And thank you, Andrea, again for presenting today. Um, it was really interesting. I will be sharing the recording and the PowerPoint uh, later today, hopefully, or early tomorrow. And in the meantime, if you have any other questions, please feel welcome to reach out. And I hope to see you in officially in probably similar meetings like this in the next year.